say something uh, to testify and glorify God, I always want to, and um, you know, I just want to thank God that I've been a Christian for many, many years, as you know, and then there was a season in my life that I was out there, God was still with me, He never leaves us, and He still used me, even when I was backslidden, but I want to say that God is so good, He's been so good to me, that He has drawn me back by His grace, by His Spirit. 
And he's, I'm getting stronger every day. And I was a minister, still am, I guess. We, the gifts and callings, I don't guess, I still am. The gifts and callings are without repentance. God is always there. And he's using me again. Uh, but I want to glorify him. It's not what w- us, it's what, we, but, but, you know, I've been reading Revelations because I've, read, I've been reading uh, through the Bible and, you know, uh, the four and twenty elders that threw their crown to, before God and all the saints and, you know, the greatest thing, I think, and the rewards that we're going to receive and we're going to be rewarded for everything that we do, every penny that we give, Every, every person that we witness to, every soul that we save, it's all being recorded in heaven, every bit of it. So take heart and know that everything that you do, every th- word that we speak, everything that we do for God is being recorded by angels. And we're going to be rewarded for it. But our greatest reward, in my opinion, it will be those who stands around that throne, who God has used us, to bring to him whose lives have been changed. And I think that will be our greatest reward, to see those people. So I want to say, saints, don't give up. You know, and many of y'all have, have been faithful, even when I was not, and you've, you've stood in there for God, and uh, I, I respect you, and, and I look up to you. Uh, but keep me in your prayers. Because God is working in my life, and I don't know what he's going to do, what he's doing with me, but he's, 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 uh, he's got a purpose. And uh, I still prophesy over every empty seat in this church that it is going to be filled by the grace of God with lost sinners. Every, and this place is going to be overflowing. I, I see that in my spirit. I've seen it, Bob. Pastor Bob, I've seen it. Every seat in this place is going to be filled and overflowing. And there's going to be a mighty move of the Holy Spirit in this place. I'm telling you, get ready. Witness wherever you go. Do everything you can. And, and I love you. And uh, praise God. Amen. Thank you so much, Greg. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put, uh, um, Philemon 1.6, King James. Philemon 1.6. Some of you might not, well, most of you are used to our services here, so we flow with the Holy Spirit, and uh, we believe in body ministry. That is, the pastor doesn't do everything. Everybody, every member does something. Doesn't mean everybody speaks, but you ought to be doing something in the house of God to keep it all going. It takes all of us. All right, this, that's amplified. I want the King James now, and then we'll come back to that. You're not in no hurry, are you? Good. That's that's wonderful. (laughs) Oh, clear water. All right. Look. Let's read that. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every bad thing which is in you. In huh? What? I'm just checking, see if you're awake. That the communication of thy faith become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. I just hold that on the board. <clears throat> when we acknowledge what the Lord has done in our lives, our faith is energized. I'm going to say that again. When we acknowledge of every good thing which we have in Christ, our faith is energized. I thank God that when I was saved back in 1957, I was 26 years old. I didn't know nothing about anything. In my mind, I knew that Christ had died on the cross, but that didn't mean nothing to me. And see, but I had it all in my mind. And then one day I went to to a local church, a little Baptist church over there across the Ashley with my wife, Susan. 
And, I, and I'm just cutting the story short. But the preacher was not given an invitation. He was making announcements. But the Holy Spirit had gotten hold of me so deeply within my being, I still can't remember getting out of the chair. It seemed like the Lord just picked me up and took me to the front. And I'm facing the pastor. He looks at me and says, yes, can I help you? And I said, yeah, I want to give my life to Christ. Now, that was on a Sunday. The week prior to that, I was out honky-tonking, drinking, cursing, smoking, <clears throat> Not fussing, not complaining, I'm just telling you like it was. <laughs> not fussing it up for you, putting ice cream on it. That's just the way I was. One moment, by surrendering my life totally to Christ and believing in my heart that God had raised him from the dead, not just believing up here. It doesn't say believing up here, it says believing down in your heart. That God raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. And I believed in my heart, and I left that service, and I went back to work. I worked out at the air base, silver service, aircraft sheet metal worker. And I had a little Bible that my mother gave me when I went into Air Force five or six years prior to that, which I picked up, finally began to read a little bit about it, carried it with me. And I don't know, I can't explain it. See, this is God. I just started witnessing. It, it, it just became so natural to me to share Christ with people. It was like if I was talking about what we had for dinner or what, what I did at work the other day. It, I could just say, I could walk up to somebody and I say, uh, uh, you know, I'd be just, uh, you know, I wouldn't be. I'd just come up, good, glad to meet you. Hey, I got a question. Notice I'm smiling. I got a question. If you died right now, where would you go? The air cracks. Thunder, lightning. Everybody stiffens up. That's a simple question. When you eat, do you get full? <laughs> well, we'll go. I asked the wrong person. I know that. If you would die right now, where would you go? To heaven or hell? You go to heaven. Well, isn't it good to know that? So you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Have you confessed him with your mouth? Because see, yeah, and, and with your mouth, and you believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, because confession is made unto what? Confession is made unto what? Confession is made unto what? Got to speak it. When Susan and me uh, got married, we stood before the preacher. And you know what everybody was waiting to hear me say and her say? Do you take this uh, wife to be your awful wedded wife? I mean, your <laughs> lawful wife. <laughs> and we'd still be standing there if she didn't say, yes, I do. How many of you know that? You got to say it. You got to say it. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. And as you say it, as you say it, as you say it, as you say it, as you say it. Now, here's where you go against your feelings. You feel this way. But here's what uh, Paul said. We say what we believe. Because sometimes you may wake up on Monday morning and feel lost. But you ain't saved by your feelings. You're saved by faith in what Christ did on the cross. And you don't change your confession. Yeah, but I told my wife to, yeah, well, you need to go and apologize and go to the Lord and confess it. Get cleared up again and just start walking, confessing, acknowledging all the, here's what we do. We acknowledge all the bad things. I don't want to hear that no more. Do you? You don't even want to hear that about you? No, all the good things that are in you in Christ Jesus. Because of him, we are in Christ. In Christ, you're more than a conqueror. In Christ, you are a new creation. In Christ, you are a recreated 
individual. In Christ, you're a son of God. In Christ, you're an heir of God. In Christ, you're a co-heir with Christ. In Christ, you are righteous. But we're hung up, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How many know that? <laughs> Raise your hand if you know that. Huh? <laughs> Let me give you the good news. When you repented and you accepted Christ, you became a new creation. Yeah, you might still be addicted to this or that, but you've got to learn to fight that which you've been addicted to. You've got to say no to that and say, yes, Lord, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus my Lord. When I got saved, I had a drinking problem. But I, I kneeled to it. I fought it. And I'd drink some, and I'd fight it again. It took me six months to overcome that particular thing. But I overcome it, and I've not touched another dr uh, drop in all those years. My dad was an alcoholic. When he gave his life to Christ, now some people, it's like that. I love to see it like that, don't you? Bang, just like that. Bang, they're set free. Some of us have to apply the word of God and begin to acknowledge not all the bad things that are in me, but acknowledge all the good things that Christ has put into you. That gives him glory. If you acknowledge all the bad things, you're giving Satan glory. You've got to learn to acknowledge all the good things that are in you in Christ Jesus. I had a... A, a, really a defect in my flesh and I felt I could go into a crowd and I would feel rejected I would always feel like I wasn't a part and that caused me to to get away from people the very people that could help me I would try I'd get away because I'd feel rejected how many ever had a little degree of rejection in your life yeah all of you have all of you you might not realize you all have we all have that came from the fall. But you're not rejected. I know some kids think, well, you know, their parents show more attention to John Harry and, and uh, doubly do and doodly da. And all. No, no, you're not rejected. You're not re no one is rejected in God. God accepts every one of us, but he wants to come into our lives and, and teach us to live by his power and not by your intellectual thinking, or should I say intellectual stinking, which is called stinking thinking. And as long as you think stinky-like, you're going to stink. You're going to put that radiation out and when people come across your presence, they go. <laughs> but when you acknowledge all the good things that are in you and confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart that you are now a child of God as you've been born again. Listen, not by your effort, not by your works, but by the spirit of God in the incorruptible seed of the word of God. What people don't understand that there's power in the word. Power in the word. Everything I'm saying I can back up with scriptures. But the time element. Some folks have to take uh, blood pressure pills. Well, I have a quiz of mine. Well, how does it work? I don't know and don't care. All I know if you take it. Your blood pressure will just, and you got to take it once a day. Some people might take two a day, I don't know. You take one a day, you don't know all the mechanics to it. All you know is within that little teeny white pill, there is the ingredients to keep your blood pressure calm. Well, in the word of God, there is power, there is spirit. My word is life and peace. But see, to get people into the Word of God and take their gospel pill daily, it's hard for me to get folks to do that. Get your Bible wherever you live. Open it up uh, wherever you work, out on the workbench, wherever you're at. Get the Bible and start reading every day in the Word of God. Start in the book of Ephesians, word, verse by verse. If you don't understand it, you come to Sunday school and we'll explain it to you. That's why I'm here. That's why we have our teachers here. 
Or you can stay like you are and die like you are and live a miserable life all your days in your life. Or you can stand up and say, Lord, I believe. I believe since I've accepted you. I believe that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you learn to draw from the strength of the Lord who is invisible just like you draw from the air that you need to keep you alive. Would you explain it to me, Charles? Thank you. <laughs> no, you don't know all the, have to know all the mechanics to it. You better just keep breathing. Just keep breathing! Do you have to yell? But it sure woke you up, didn't it? Oh, uh, who's got a testimony? You got one? All right, let us have it. I'm going to sit down and rest. Have a seat. Thank you. I got two things to share. Um, but first, I want to share. Uh, me and Rachel went to a Christmas party last night, which is an office Christmas party. But Rachel hasn't worked for Vincent Law Firm in 10 years. The office has been closed, I think, for seven years. So what do you have an office party for? <laughs> Eleven years. So, but what it was, was this was an attorney. And if you think you got a tough job, try to be a Christian attorney in today's world and have to deal with this junk and still hold to your principles and deal with people the way you should. But anyway, what, what it is is there's four couples along with him and his wife and we're not co-workers anymore, <clears throat> and we're more than friends, we're family. And we always meet still as a family to celebrate Christmas together. And he's meant a lot to us, and we mean a lot to him, but he, he gave us a card last night, and uh, Rachel gave it to me, and I read it, and I cried then. I might cry now, so just excuse me if I do. But I'll get to the, you know, a card, you get a card, you know, people give you cards, now, Miss Susan, Mr. Vincent will give you a run for the money on these cards now. He knows what to write. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he, he wrote this, and uh, I'll get to where I'm going with it. I want you to listen to it, but it's just, Dear Charles and Rachel, I give thanks to God for putting the two of you in my life. Remembering hiring Rachel from the small claims court, she was such a friendly, vivacious young woman at the time, but one that I could tell was special, she epitomized what a Christ-like woman should be. Now, I'm not bragging on my wife. I didn't write it. But he saw something in my wife. You notice he didn't say she did such great work or, you know, she was on time. But he saw something in her that only spirit to spirit sees. And thank God, Charles, he of the quiet, low-key type, I don't think so. That's what he said after that. <laughs> that infectious laugh and his commitment to our Lord and Savior. Both of you are very special to me. Thanks for being part of our lives. Now, that's a nice card and nice words, but see, when I read it, spirit touched spirit. And Pastor Bob said it the other day, you get to a point in your life, you know, it's hard to love people. Because we have such crazy emotions and characteristics and attitudes. So we ebb and flow. But when you start loving people the way Christ loves people, which is what Mr. Vincent does. We don't work for him no more. We see him once a year if we're fortunate. But the lives that have touched each other in a way that he sees me and my wife as Christ sees us. He loves us just as much as his own children. And, and he, there's a, you can't describe it, what, but I felt that what he feels for us. And he's been a blessing to us, and we've been a blessing to him. And it's so fortunate to have someone like that in your life that, that doesn't owe you anything, but loves you. The way Christ loves you. And so we have a good time. And someone said, how long are we going to keep having these office Christmas parties since we don't have an office? And I said, well, till we ain't in these bodies anymore, we're going to keep on, my guests coming together and having the party. But it's such a blessing. So, you know, 
when you're struggling out there and you want friends and you got to get friends on Facebooks and you got to go see friends, these are friends. God will connect you to who you need to be friends with if you let him. God will connect you to the family you need to be involved. Sometimes you can't be involved with some of your family. You know, there's some people that are friends that are closer to you than family is. And that's not being a bad person, but listen, you got to link up with who is linked up with you. Or you will be brought down or built up. One or the other is going to happen. So just remember that. And that really touched me. Like I said, it's a Christmas card, and he, he's gave us plenty of cards, but that it, spirit to spirit hit, and I saw Mr. Vincent and his wife love me and my wife the way Christ loves us. And that was a, such a blessing to, to get that out of that card last night. So just remember that. You want to get friends? God will lead you to friends like this. They don't expect nothing from you. They don't want nothing from you. They just want to share love with you. That's what he would get. And I got one other thing, Pastor Bob. I got one more thing. The great lead in for another Christmas card. This is a uh, card from the church to Pastor Bob and Miss Susan. And it's a card inside with a gift. And now he don't need a gift. But see, I know his name is Jimmy. Who don't get that? Just ask someone later. <laughs> so if y'all come on up. That's to Pastor Bob and Miss Susan. And just the same as I was describing Mr. Vincent, we love you guys, not just because you do so much for us, but we love you because you both made a decision to submit your lives to God. And out of that, you see the fruit. Yes. Amen. You see the fruit. Amen. And as the fruit, we want to give back to you. Appreciate and we appreciate you and we love you. And just, just like he said, we appreciate your commitment. Amen. And we thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Amen. Amen. Thank you. As Charles said, my middle initial is Jimmy. What you got, babe, before I get into trouble? <laughs> to God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be all the glory for the things he has done. With his blood, he has saved us. By his power, he has raised us. To God be the glory for all the things he has done. And we thank God for you. Amen. You. We love you all too. And Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Thank you, darling. I know I kid people and tell them my name is Jimmy and I'll take all you give me. And in being a shepherd, you take the bad with the good. <laughs> and you give bad... You just throw it in the trash can and you take the good and you give God the glory. But let me say this. You're not going to live in this world without being offended. Some of you might be here and you don't realize it, but you've been offended 20 years back, 10 years back. Might be offended this morning, I don't know. But if you let that offense dominate and control your life and don't forgive that person, you see, there's a law in God's Word, and that is if you don't forgive others as Christ has forgiven you, 
then God cannot forgive us. He wants to, but you see, that resentment blocks his love, his forgiveness to flow out of us. People have been hurt with their husbands, their wives, their children. There's no way in the world that you're going to live in this life here and not be offended. But like Susan always says, love the person, but you don't have to love their deeds sometimes and what they say or what they do, but you love them. And that counteracts you from getting bitter or resentful. Some people, it's easier to receive than give. Some people, it's easier to give than receive. I want you to hear me now. Are you having a hard time receiving God's love? That might be a root of your problem. How could people love me? They don't know what I have done, and we don't need to know. God knows, and he loved you while you were yet a sinner. And you're going to have to learn to receive God's love. Because his love is perfect, and perfect love casts out fear. Are you listening? So it's not always doing more. Many times it's a matter of receiving more where God can produce into us giving more. Are you having a hard time really believing that God loves you? And all these things go into your mind what you've done when you were a teenager. Let me tell you something. When you become a Christian, whatever you've done back there, God don't remember. Are you listening? But you remember, and the devil uses it to bog you down and make you feel like you are not worth loving. And you got to break that by simply acknowledging God loves me. Minus what I've done or didn't do. See, it's hard for us to conceive that type of love. Oh, you scratch my back and I'll scratch your back. But if you don't scratch my back, you think I'm going to scratch your back? No way. See, that's the mental concept that people have. But see, God's love is a giving love. For God so loved the world that he, what? Gave his what? His only dollar. Well, that's true, but I'm bringing it down where we can understand. But I only have a dollar. Well, I do have a, a mint here. <laughs> I, 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 I think the Lord would like that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm not making fun, but listen, we're getting down to reality here. We've got to find out while we're ticking. W what's wrong that we can't uh, uh, rejoice in the Lord? What's wrong that we cannot conceive and understand that all charges have been dropped and Jesus Christ paid the price? He was our substitute. I should have went to hell, but he stepped in between the Father and me and said, Father, look at that cross up there. I'll take the beating, and it pleased God to bruise and afflict his son for you and me. And I'm convinced when you begin to love your own self, now we're not talking about a selfish love here. We're not talking about loving the, the, the old uh, soul life. We let that go to the cross but it's God's creation. See, if you've been born again, you're not like what you used to be. 
So your flesh still has its appetites. It still has its uh, addiction. And that's where you got to feed that inner man with the word of God to get that inner man strong enough to overcome those addictions. Are you listening to me? You know, it may be gossip. It may be drinking. It may be smoking pot. It may be alcohol. But how much, now, not, love me just a little bit like I'm loving you. Would you do that? Just, just love me. Everybody say that out of the boat, love him just a little bit like that. Now, somebody might want to stretch it a little. Yeah, it'd be all right. How about, you know? Uh, listen, my name is Jimmy. I'll take all the love you give me. Uh, you've got to realize God loves you. Yeah, 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 yeah but you don't, you don't understand what I, I don't care what you, God loves you. And you got to accept that. And when you do accept it, that love will come into your heart. The Bible says God has shed his love into our heart. We're talking about the agape love. Loving people, doing things for people, and they never do nothing for us. And we love them, and we want a fellowship with them. Now, I'm going to go to another thing here, because we're going to go back there to eat and party pretty soon. Okay. <laughs> Get into the Word of God every day. I want to challenge you for the next year. This is not to bring you into bondage. This is to bring you into liberty. Because the Bible says when we become a doer of the Word, we will be blessed. And the Bible says if you just hear the Word, then you actually are self-deceived. So as your pastor, I'm trying to encourage you. Everybody gets into the Because, see, the enemy can so deceive us in our minds that he can draw us away and blind us. But the Word of God is so powerful. As we soak into that Word in us. Now, I'm going to prove my point here. Starting today, I know we got food back there, and I'll take care of that. But I don't want you to eat for, for a month. Did, did you hear what I said? How many would stick their tongue out of that? Let me, let me see you stick your tongue out of that. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Why, well, why would you want to eat? Huh? Well, I like to eat because I like the way it tastes. And God's so wonderful. He gives you all these taste bubs, and you can taste that fried chicken and, and that mashed potatoes and then that, that broccoli uh, uh, and then that T-bone steak. And uh, uh, then that uh, just you can taste it. See, God is so good. But if you didn't eat two months from now, we're all gathered here today. To pay our last respects to our brother that did not eat. And some, can I be honest, some of you haven't been in the word. The only word you get is maybe your wife, your wife will give you a word. <laughs> you can laugh. The women go. Isn't that something? I have to encourage the body of Christ to eat the word of God. That's right. But I will do it and keep doing it because I love you. And know that if you don't let the word get into you and get grafted into you, next year you'll be the same way. Overcome by the world, the flesh, and the devil. Still hate myself. Can't never do nothing right. Nobody loves me. Poor me. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes. And it will pierce into your soul, into the, the marrow of your body, and bring health and strength and spiritual life in you like you've never known before. Right. Now, I want to show you how powerful love is. Or I'm going to show you how powerful words are. Very strong. Listen to this. Susan, would you bring that glass of water to me, darling?
Thank you, darling. I'll take it from here. I had that glass of water come to me. It came to me by me speaking. How many's got it? You speak what you believe. You speak what you want. Lord, I want to be free. I want to be a living example. I want to be a letter read by all men. I want people to see Jesus in me that you might be glorified. I'm sick and tired of this fleshly stuff. I'm sick and tired of this alcohol, this drug bit. I'm sick and tired of this garbage. I want to eat the word of God, which is alive, which is real. I'm sick and tired of being a crabby habby. I want to be a man of the living God. That's who I am. I'm a son of the living God. God. That's who I am. I believe that. And brother, after a while, you start to just keep drinking. What'd you put in that water, babe? That's good. That's good. That's good. Stuff. See, you can't live without water. You cannot live without the water of God. See, we don't, we don't compare that. We don't understand that our spiritual man doesn't need that steak. That spiritual man doesn't need that mashed potatoes. Uh, that that, that, that uh, spirit man doesn't need that apple pie with ice cream upon ice cream. It needs the Word of God. It doesn't grow by ice cream. It doesn't grow and mature uh, uh, by uh, uh, criticism and, oh, poor old me. No, it grows when you feast on the Word of the living God. God spoke and things came into existence. And until we learn to speak what the Word of the Lord says, we will not come into nothing. We'll just be a crab on the beach. How many love me now? Glad to know you. Glad to know you. What kind of preacher is that? I'm just a voice in the wilderness. I just don't have a camel suit on. Susie just won't let me wear a camel suit. I tell you, she just don't think I look good. You know, they're real short here, you know, and... But I want you to know I love every one of you. And I'm here to encourage you. And I do encourage you. And I love every one of you. And you may be here and you're just floating along. And you are got one foot in the world and one foot uh, in the kingdom. It ain't going to work that way. It won't work that way. You won't grow. You won't mature. If some of you went to school when you were younger... Like you go to church today? <laughs> Preach it, Bob. I believe we will. <laughs> see, we're here. See, God wants us to meet as a family, especially as you see that in time comes. Because many shall leave the face and be, de and be deceived and give heed to seducing spirits. So some have probably some folks wouldn't even know their ABCs because they don't only go, go to church once a week. Twice a week, some people go uh, Easter, Resurrection Day, and then Christmas. The preacher would always say, well, you know, you're here, uh, you're here for Easter, so I'll say Merry Christmas to you now because I won't see you probably <laughs> until then. <laughs> Come on, I love you. You know I love you, but I'm talking to you. You know, you know I'm talking right well, you know, my children don't, don't, don't want to go to church. I want to ask you a question. If they decided not to go to school, what would you do? Hmm? What would you do? I'm talking to somebody. I know I'm looking at a bunch of what would, How many would see that the children went to school? Huh? Come on, church. Uh, if your husband didn't want to go, what would you do, wife? Huh? I don't know if you got any ideas. Let me know. <laughs> How many love me? Uh, very, I know it's just getting smaller now. <laughs> you got to love me. The Bible says you got to love me. If you don't love me, you're not a Christian. That's what it says. Read it. 1 John 4. Right in that chapter. I want to see uh, more of you in Sunday school. Tell it like it is, Bob. Well, because I love you.
and I know people work, and I know all about the family. I raised three, uh, we, uh, Susan raised three kids, four kids, counting myself, you know, <clears throat> and ten grandchildren. And they all had friends, and they all bring them over for dinner. We've gone through all of that in our life. We know what it is to have to buy braces. We know what it is to get piano lessons. We know what it is about the parties here and the parties there at school. We've gone through all of that more than one time. So we can tell you, through it all, we stayed faithful to Jesus. God first. The family, the church. Get your priorities right. Make your mind up. RJ, good to see you, son. Appreciate you. And those that I haven't seen for a while, love all of you. Are you ready to eat? Oh, boy. Now, listen, we don't eat the pie first and the cake. I will take care of that. <laughs> all right god's given us all something to think about you got something you want i know our brother wants to say something all right come on and we've got time let, let, let him say what he wants to say and then then you say i just wanted to say to everybody for the new year as god brought it to my remembrance this morning first and foremost i want to say for this whole year if there's anybody that i've offended i'm sorry public apology uh but what I really want to say, what God laid on my heart to say this morning, what he brought back to my remembrance, because I got, was ministering to somebody early this morning, and um, he was reminding me of the times that he brought me through things that only he could bring me through. And what I want to say is that I know there's a lot of people believing for God to do some things in their life, and what he's saying is hold on. You know, we have to be patient and wait on him. I've got some big faith things in my life that I'm waiting on God to do. And I'm believing for this new year that he's going to do that. You know, he hasn't said no. All he, all he keeps saying to me is patience. And when, when that, that means, yes, that's exactly what it means. And, I, and I'm doing that. I'm taking steps as to how he's showing me how to handle it and how to do it. It's not easy. You know, the, the enemy's been fighting me just as much as he fights y'all. You know, I've lost some uh, sleepless nights where I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and got to prayer time. But I, I just want to say that what, what Joel Osteen encouraged me this morning, he said, don't forget the small victories that God's brought in your life. If you haven't seen something come to pass in your life yet, just hold on and praise him for the small victories because the big ones are on the way. And, and I, I can bear witness to that because I have seen God bring me through a lot financially. I mean, we still have that struggle, but I'm not, let, I'm not moved by it. I'm not worried. You know, he's taught me to have, have faith and patience to just trust him. And I just want to encourage everybody today. And with permission, I, I do this because this is one of my callings that I do know, is I want to pray for everybody for the new year. And if, by your permission, I'd like to do that. So if everybody will bow their heads, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now for this opportunity. And Lord, I needed to hear myself say that because i got to believe what I speak. Because that's what faith comes by, hearing the word of God and by putting it into motion, not by what we see or what we feel but by what we believe. In Hebrews 11, verse 1. And Father, I want to thank you for everybody here, and I pray for this new year that we're entering into, that everybody in this place would be abundantly, more than abundantly blessed, whether it be in their business, whether it be in their lives, their spiritual walk, their relationship with you, um, in their relationships with each other, fellowship, Lord, we ask that you grow this church the way that you would have it to be grown. And, Lord, we ask for that power of the Holy Spirit, that fire that used to fall back in the days when we were younger, when we went to church, Lord. We may be old-fashioned, Lord, but you know how to do it. We just trust you to do that this year, Father God, this up-and-coming year. And, Lord, if there's any need in the house, Father God, we just ask that you fill that need right now. 
Whatever it may be, Lord, may you bring them to the wisdom and understanding of your love and admonition and growing in you, Father God, and knowing, Lord, that you are there no matter what the situation is or the circumstance and that you're going to bring them through. Thank you for allowing me to pray. Thank you for making me a prayer warrior, God. I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And thank you, Lord, that you've made us all perfect in our weaknesses. That we all have weaknesses, Lord, and we thank you that you're bringing us through those weaknesses and making us strong in you because it was when I was weak that I realized I was strong in the Lord because my dependency was not on myself, it was on you. I love you, God, and I thank you for this new year, what you're bringing to pass. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus for all of us. Amen. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all. Um, I'll make this quick because I heard Charles' stomach when I was sitting by him just now. <laughs> so I so, uh, just want to thank all of you all for last week. You know, we didn't, we would have, uh, we made it through last week because of God, because of y'all, we all here. Um, we had a lot going on, still do. But, um, you know, we're here, we made it. I, I, I just want to. Um, you know, I saw the picture up there a few minutes ago and, and then with the sword and the Bible. And, you know, I have a. I have a lot of swords, physical, I mean real swords, at the house, and they're all over the place. And uh, I've been told by my wife not to bring any more there because we have so many. But I saw the Bible there, too, with it. And, you know, Pastor Bob said a few minutes ago uh, how we should be in that word during the week. And I used to listen to, you know, I'm working a lot, so I used to listen to Bible radio stuff on on the, on the radio during the week. And um, some of those things, I don't listen to all of those stations too much anymore because a lot of times I'm going from one zone to the next. So even if I'm listening to something, by the time I get into it, that station is gone because I'm traveling. And so I don't, I don't get to, you know, get set into those stations. But... Um, I used to listen to some of the CDs I had, some of the tapes that I had, et cetera, et cetera. But I haven't been doing that lately either. So my time being spent in the Word has gotten shorter and shorter. Except, you know, coming here, you know, when we're, due, when we, when we're here and when we're not so busy. But that's becoming shorter and shorter. And I have no excuse, actually, because my mother-in-law bought me a little... A Bible, uh, 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 it's basically the whole Bible, but it's digital. So I can listen to the whole Bible every day if I wanted to. But it seems like over the last couple of months, things have been breaking here and there and not have allowed me to listen to that, that little device. I used to be able to listen to it in my truck and actually plug it in, plug it in and actually feed it through the stereo system and listen to it. Well, my little devices keep breaking to where I can't do that. It seems like all the time there's something trying to stop me from getting into that. So, you know, and, and I've let that stuff be my excuse, but really there is no excuse. I mean, I mean really, I, could, I can fix those problems, but they, they're still there. So, you know, I'm just going to go back and commit to that of getting those things straightened out so that I can get that word in there every day. I, I, I don't have an excuse. I really don't. <laughs> but, I, but I do. I'm using it and I'm letting, I'm allowing that to come in and use. I've been allowing Satan to come in and, and, and do a lot of things. And, 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 and here I am. <laughs> Here I am, you know, trying to be so tough and so strong, but yet I keep letting him come on in. And so, you know, from now on, if he wants to fight, I mean, I got one for him. 
<laughs> so, so, so it's just going to be that from, you know, from now on. And uh, I just wanted to thank all of y'all for, for last week. We, we made it. That, that was a, you know, it was a lot of stuff going on, and we, we, we came through that week, but the fight goes on. But thank y'all. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get on back to the back. You know, if you got a vehicle and you drive it around and you never change the oil, one day a wrecker is going to come pick your car up and tow it to the shop. So, by the same effect, if you never come to absorb in the word and be part of a body, one day you're going to be drug in here by the collar of your shirt, broken. Why wait to be broken? We're not supposed to wait till we're broken. Sometimes it takes a breaking, but learn your lesson from that. I don't need to break down again to be here. So that's what a few things have encouraged you. Yeah, life is busy. But if your life is so busy that you can't be involved with God, you need to get a pair of scissors out and start chopping some things out of your life that you ain't got to be so busily involved with. So as Eddie said, ain't no excuse other than the one you want to give. And that excuse ain't worth much. <laughs> you said the word busy. If you're too busy for God, you're being under Satan's yoke. That's right. He wants to disguise that. He, he knows what your calendar looks like, and he likes to pinpoint things you should be doing on your calendar. But don't let him. So let that be in, it's not, it's not condemnation, it's encouragement, see? Because we, we see people broken, and when something's broke, it takes longer to fix it. If you get in there before it breaks, you can deal with it a little quicker, a little easier. It, it don't bruise so bad. But if you keep waiting until you break every time, one day you ain't going to mend so easy, okay? So we encourage you to be involved, whether it's this body, anybody. Be involved, because you're involved not just with people and the pastor, you're involved with the Lord. All right, all right, we're going to go ahead and say the blessing, uh, so we don't have to do it when we get back there. Everyone just bow their head. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that uh, it's about submission. If we're willing to submit to you, we'll enjoy all the fruits that you have to give us. And Lord, we just want to submit to you. We thank you that you came to be our Savior. There's nothing we can do for you other than just give you our love back to you for loving us. And right now, Lord, we just ask that you bless this food we're going to share in the fellowship, Lord, that it will be a blessing to our bodies, and then we in turn can be a blessing to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you need prayer now, you can get up, go back there, and we can start eating. I've already said the blessing. But if you need prayer, come up, and uh, some of us will be up here to pray with you. If you need prayer, you come up.